This is the way we talk in Tucson, Arizona. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 365, it's our Illumination Chamber pre- preview and assorted other news show, I'm Ethan. Welcome back, Crab fans, I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. <laughs> and as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. You know, I may tune into this show this week, just to hear what's in the bonus features at the end of the program. <laughs> A lot of a lot of discussion of uh, certain political uh, famous famous politicians nicknames and strange eating habits. I think. All right. Well, that that should be a good time. <laughs> so WWE has Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia this weekend, five a.m. on a Saturday. Totally normal time to have a pay per view. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Their last early Saturday morning. Uh, Australia pay per view had that wonderful uh, Triple H Undertaker match. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. Uh, I have often said that that match is equally or almost equally as embarrassing as the Saudi DX tag from like two weeks later. But uh, that one's not remembered as uh, as infamously, I guess, because of the because of bald Sean and Kane's wig falling off and all the other terrible things that happened at the Saudi show a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Hunter Torres pack mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 30 seconds into the match. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as memorable, but the, they went like, I remember them going like 40 minutes mm-hmm. at uh, 8 AM on a Saturday and uh, it not being particularly good. So in that vein this weekend, they have uh, the matches should be better. Uh, there's only four of them announced for the for the card mm-hmm. to this point. Uh, men's chamber to for a shot at uh, Seth Rollins at uh, Mania. There's Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton versus Bob Lashley versus LA Knight versus Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul. Um, Drew, I assume so, <laughs> and we assume that he must have resigned or like it's just. All it's all but official that he's right. Resigned. Yeah, he, he, he beat Cody Rhodes on Raw on Monday. <laughs> Why? I mean, that was a bizarre decision. <laughs> Why? Why the hell did you beat Cody Rhodes on the road to WrestleMania? <laughs> uh, insane. Because, and again, it's one of those things where you can argue. Well, you know, he slips on a banana peel. The the bloodline got involved. Yeah, but you don't. Maybe the current regime looks at things differently, even though most of them are the same people that were here when Vince was there. <laughs> um, but historically, when when the World Wrestling Federation is pushing a tippy top top guy, he does not lose even in this sort of way. <laughs> so seems questionable to do so. I suppose the the devil's advocate would be because at WrestleMania, they're going to do that same spot again where Solo jumps up on the apron and gives him the thumb and then and then Roman hits the spear. But this time, Cody's going to kick out. And that's that's what they're they're chasing with this idea that he's lost because of Solo. Solo giving him the thumb twice now. Well, thank you for playing devil's advocate. Um, I think all that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> I I do not disagree. I'm yeah, that's that's that was the closest thing to logic I yeah. could find to explain it. And and also because you have so few credible people for Drew to beat because you're also trying to heat him up as a heel for for the I mean what are they they're gonna go on like third on uh, night two of WrestleMania because Seth's gonna wrestle in the tag on night one, we assume. Yeah, they may op- they may open. <laughs> right. So it's like, well, we gotta keep gotta keep Drew hot for that and for 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 the Filster when he's healthy. I would argue it would be less counterproductive to beat just roll Seth in there and have Drew Claymore him and pin him. Uh <laughs> on, on a random raw between now and WrestleMania than it was to uh beat Cody Rhodes on Raw on Monday. 
Yeah, because like I mean, Seth's still dealing with an injury. Just do yes. a non-title match. Have Drew get a win over Seth. That would be fine. And yes. it's, and Seth's belt doesn't matter as we've <laughs> as we've long since established. So yeah, beat Correct. him. You beat him all the time. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it would really make, make much more sense mm-hmm. I mean aside from the fact that he can't work right now um <laughs> it would make sense uh, I don't I don't know I just there was a lot of things on raw that just made me scratch my head I have absolutely no idea what they were doing uh anyway another match uh here's here's a good example so another match for this elimination chamber pay-per-view on Saturday is Rhea Ripley defending the women's world title against Nia Jax. Mm-hmm. Now, Rhea Ripley's been pushed as an unbeatable monster uh for a year now and has um really rarely wrestled. Uh I'm not sh- <laughs> not sure what exactly is going on there. Um I suspect maybe she had a surgery at some point. I don't know. But uh it's odd that uh she hasn't really wrestled a whole lot <laughs> since beating Charlotte Flair last year. I mean, it is convenient in the sense that um, they don't ever make baby fa- credible baby face challengers in their women's division, except for Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. Yeah. So she wouldn't have had anyone to wrestle anyway. So, you know, <laughs> that's fair. Self-fulfilling prophecy in that way. We we didn't have to watch her wrestle like Katana Chance or Shotzi or somebody. Sure. Um, she's defending against Nijax here at Elimination Chamber, and uh, Rhea's uh, Australian, so that she'll be a huge baby face. And Nijax, um, you know, doesn't really win a whole lot of matches, so they decided we really got to heat Nia up mm-hmm. uh, on Monday, and they had her destroy every woman in the women's chamber match by herself, one on six. Uh, in a fair fight. Uh, so Nia Jax laid out Becky Lynch, mm-hmm. Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and Raquel Rodriguez on Raw. Uh, and it didn't even lead to like Rhea Ripley running in to f- to a fighter or to do a pull apart or anything. Like, not the- Nia just laid six people out all by herself and then uh, stood there. And uh, they did they did a backstage in separate uh, areas of promo between Rhea and Nia earlier in the show. Look, you got to heat up Nia. I get that. Um, You got to make her look strong. Sure. Make Nia look strong. Make Nia look strong. (laughs) But uh, she laid out every woman that's going to challenge. Uh, that will be fighting for the chance to challenge Rhea at WrestleMania uh, in the process. I thought this is uh, extremely counterproductive. Yeah. Um, at least, unless Nia is winning <laughs> the title, which... No, no chance. I wouldn't think so. Less than 0% chance. She did pin Becky clean on the first Raw of the, of the year. Um, so Becky's got to get her win back at some point. So sure. I do, so I don't even think like her laying out Becky would have been terrible, even though, as we've talked about, Becky should should request herself to be booked <laughs> like Steve Austin, but she requests herself to be booked like Mick Foley instead. Correct. Um, but Correct. based on the fact that you're telling a story, she's beat. She broke Becky's face eight years ago, or whatever, and <laughs> she's and she beat Becky clean on Raw. So if the if your idea is you're you're setting her up as a challenger for Becky, either between now and WrestleMania, or as if Becky wins the title at Mania to be Becky's first challenger afterwards, that's that's fine. Like, I think you could make an argument for her doing something with her and Becky where she once again stands tall over Becky. But having her lay out literally everyone, um, and as you said, Rhea, not even apparently being in the building for the show, other than, I mean, they did the pre-tape, I assume she was there, but... Uh, yeah, a little, little counterproductive because um, it seems like, again, unless none of those women are going to be facing Nia Jax uh, immediately, so except maybe Becky. So, yeah, kind of a kind of a strange decision, but that's that's what we did. And yeah, uh, that match should be 
uh, fun from a crowd reaction standpoint, I would think. And it'll be one of the only matches on the show that the crowd can see, which will probably be nice for them as well. Correct. Uh, we mentioned the women's chamber match. Becky Lynch is winning that, and Tiffany Stratton's doing a moonsaw off a pod. Um, I could not be more here for this match. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a. I mean, other than Raquel, uh, who's fine. Like, there's not, there's not like this is this is a pretty good solid on paper roster, and Liv who has a lot of very passionate fans. Uh, you know, on paper, this is a, this is a, this could be a really fun, exciting match. Becky can go. Bianca can go. Tiffany can go. Mm -hmm. Naomi and Liv can do their spots Mm -hmm. and Raquel can catch people. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds good. Sounds like, uh, and you imagine it's going to be a TJ Wilson special. So it'll probably be laid out very well as well. We, we can only hope. Um, the judgment day. Finn Balor and Damian Priest will be defending their tag team titles against the New Catch Republic, which is the name that WWE Creative came up with for Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate. Mm-hmm. I don't like uh, Pete and Tyler's chances. I don't like their name. <laughs> I, don't <really. laughs> I don't like that they're doing like a 2016 British indie wrestling gimmick, honestly. <laughs> Like it feels a little dated, doesn't it? I think I mean, yeah, but I mean I think I think uh corporate officer number one is always gonna be in that headspace. True. Yeah. I mean that's your uh, your your mind maybe gets stuck in the era where you received the most acclaim as a booker. Sure. Yeah. So he's he's hitting his greatest hits and these guys had great matches together uh, before, and I assume could have great matches as a team. I'm sure it could be a good match, although um, Finn Finn Balor has reached like incredibly uh, aspirational goals of phoning it in, <laughs> almost John Morrison level. Yeah, he's he's pretty incredible. <laughs> like, he's very funny. Like he does a lot of funny things, and it's just, but he's completely. Uh, like given up with the idea of being like a big time pro wrestling star. And he's just, he's just cashing his checks going home to be a wife guy. So I I don't expect this to be like a classic, but again, crowd should be into it and everybody involved is a, is a good worker. So we'll see. He is heavily focused on being a wife guy. Yes. (laughs) Um, and the only other thing uh, advertised for this show is the Grayson Waller effect with Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. So they're making so, poor uh, poor Seth fly to uh, Australia with a bum knee. Sure, I mean, why not? I mean, Roman and Dwayne aren't getting on that plane, so you gotta you gotta have somebody to cut the cut the cut the promos. You can have Jimmy and uh, Jimmy and Solo interrupt, and Cody and Cody and uh, Seth can send them packing or whatever. You know, be the be the surrogates for the real stars who uh, didn't didn't feel like making the flight. I I guess, I guess. I mean, this is to set up the media match. You would hope and pray. Um, and two of the guys, at least one of the guys, is, is not going to be there. Um, I think I don't know if Dwayne is telling the truth or not. If he's a uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he were there, but okay. I don't know. What do you know? He's a he's a big time heel now. Uh, we we don't usually because SmackDown is so far in the rearview mirror. We don't talk about it, but we should probably talk about uh, big time heel Dwayne now, right? Yeah. So he came out on SmackDown last week dressed in a shirt from 1998, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, he healed on uh, Utah, and um officially joined the bloodline and a lot of people thought he was dropping breadcrumbs for an eventual baby face turn uh, against Roman uh, here in his first heel promo. I mean, you could see, you could, you can make that argument if you wanted to see those things. Okay. Uh, I think um, anyone professing to have any idea of what's going on with this angle, uh, it's just not telling the truth. (laughs) 
<laughs> and uh it can uh, it can change from hour to hour mm-hmm. as well so uh but uh the rock cut a heel promo mm-hmm. and uh what did you think of it uh it was, it was the brian gort's greatest hits wasn't it it was trailer park trash and no sing along with the rock and and all that stuff it was uh it was okay i thought it was very uh low energy <laughs> I'll ad- low energy dwayne johnson low low energy dwayne but it's also the first time he's had to cut a heel promo since 2003 or whatever so um i i thought it was i thought it was okay i felt like the crowd didn't want to boo the rock <laughs> yeah which is ironic given all of all of the shifting and turning they've done over the last month or so. Um, but you know, I think he can, he can go out there and he can beg for booze doing, doing what he did there, insulting, you know, insulting them, call the fans fat, call the fans ugly. And you know, everybody has his, his hilarious nicknames that, uh, that Brian comes up with, uh, with, uh, with him for. So, I, th- I think it'll be all right. I do. I ha- I do think that at the end of that tag match, Roman and Rock are going to lose the match, and then after the match, Rock's going to hit a rock bottom on Roman Reigns, and <laughs> we'll we'll go from there. But uh, we'll you know we'll we'll see what what we do on this on this Perth show and how uh, Dwayne is as a heel. One thing for sure about Dwayne is that he is going to make sure. Uh, to be drinking a delicious can of Zoa Energy uh, with the logo facing the camera at all times. Did that in his uh, the pre-tape they did where he's arriving at the building in his big truck. He's a he's salt of the earth guy. He drives a big truck, and uh, and he has his can of Zoa Energy there. And then they did like a backstage video for for social media, and he's once again drinking drinking a can of delicious Zoa Energy, and he is once again having the the logo face the camera for the entire clip. Just wonderful, wonderful content, wonderful dual branded content and brand integration from uh, from our salt of the earth friend, Dwayne. You mentioned that he uh, he drives a big, uh, big truck. Mm-hmm. He's like he's really America's best friend. <laughs> I mean, if you were to break down <laughs> on the side of the road, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson would pull over and help you change your tire. Uh, with a camera crew there you know as often as we digress into the david letterman making fun of jay leno shtick i somehow did not see it coming before (laughs) before you went into Dwayne as america's best friend i so i just didn't see it coming it really uh really really caught me off guard this time always nice that after 10 years of doing this show i can still surprise you that's awesome (laughs) oh boy uh, on a much uh, darker note, uh, John Cena, but I guess in a similar vein, John mm. Cena went on Howard Stern show this week. He did an hour long interview. About five minutes of it was spent talking about Vince McMahon and the lawsuit uh, alleging Vince McMahon of sex trafficking uh, and uh, sexual assault that's going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, John Cena speaking like a robot about uh, about Vince. And uh, Randy Orton, I guess, did an interview with Sports Illustrated this week and uh, somehow came up with better answers than John Cena did (laughs) Uh, by saying, uh, I love Vince, but if these are true, that's really messed up and uh, he should be held accountable. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Thoughts on uh, Robo John's uh, (laughs) corporate speak on Howard Stern. Howard Stern, by the way, has become Barbara Walters. I was going to say, because like my impression of Howard Stern is like clips from 15 to 20 years ago when he was already like 10 years past his prime and he was really leaning into like the shock jock sure. stuff. And every uh, interview was about sex and and, and everything. Sure. Uh, so like apparently, yeah, he's like you said, he's, he's Bob Ross. He's actually asking very thoughtful questions these days. He's an excellent interviewer. Yeah, and I thought the question he asked John Cena was, I thought, like a really pointed, well-asked question because obviously John was mentored by this guy. He's 
he no one expect I didn't expect a full throated uh, condemnation of Vince McMahon, the person from John right. Cena. I don't think anybody did. Right. Um, whether you would you wish that would be the case or not, it's not realistic. But he asked him a very poignant question. He said, you know, I've had friends who have ended up in this situation. Isn't it hard? How do you deal with a good friend of yours being <laughs> accused of these horrific things? Basically, I'm paraphrasing, but and John Cena spent, as you said, about five minutes uh, just just saying, <laughs> just saying a whole lot of just a music. collection of words. Yes. Like it, talking about like I, I choose love and I choose uh, this. Is, this involves a person and a and a brand. Well, not, he didn't say brand an entity, an entity that I'm that I'm very that I love. And, you know, I and all of this stuff N- didn't at any point offer anything resembling sympathies to Miss Grant or any of the other uh, folks who may have been in a similar situation, didn't comment on like culture or even, and again, not even a generic way, like, as you said, Randy Orton did where he, where he goes, yes, this person was like a father, like a mentor to me. And it's, and it's hard for me to parse that out with what he is being accused of, but you know, at the same time, these allegations are har- horrible and need to be investigated. Like that's all you have to say, right? Like, <laughs> yes, get get in, get out. Thirty seconds, and it seemed, if I had to guess, that John um, pointedly told his handlers and PR and agents, under no circumstances am I going to say anything that could even be slightly construed as critical of Vince McMahon. That's what it felt like to me. But yeah. um, the, the closest you got was him being like, well, I'm uh, also a big advocate of accountability. <laughs> that was that's the closest you got to John offering anything related to. Uneven uh, an, anything resembling a, a human reaction to uh, to what his uh, his longtime collaborator has been accused of. So um, not a not a great answer. And it's just fascinating that a guy who is as careful <laughs> as John Cena has been about cultivating his public image, can't bring himself to give even a very generic uh, answer, decent answer to this question. And also, folks may remember when Vince was ousted the first time, John let himself be publicly seen going to dinner with him at Vince's birthday party. So John clearly made a choice that he is he's standing by his man and doesn't seem like he's going to uh, be shaken from that position, perhaps unless say uh, maybe a criminal, maybe if there is in fact a federal investigation and a fed and federal criminal charges are brought, perhaps that would, uh, that would change his tune at that point. But uh, we just won't know until we get that far, if, and when we get that far, I suppose. Switching gears. <laughs> AEW Dynamite this week was a wonderful variety show. Mm. Hangman Page was definitely not injured during the show. He may have a personal issue that it may keep him from working the pay-per-view uh, next next month that you're going to. Mm-hmm. Uh, good news for you. You will not be seeing the rated R superstar Adam Copeland wrestle Christian Cage on that show. Daniel, Daniel Garcia is in that spot. Uh, just... A um, a weird dynamite in that mm-hmm. they have two weeks uh, to the pay per view and uh, one week before their go home show, and I guess they did add two matches, but still a lot of weird stuff on this show. Uh, Ward Low cutting a quote unquote shoot promo, uh, leading to him being booked for Meat Madness, which admittedly sounds tremendous. Agreed uh, for Revolution. The TNT title match being made official for Revolution, and then just a a bunch of stuff on this show. Uh, I don't know, uh, an excellent Sting promo yes. on the show as well. Uh, what did you think of Dynamite this week? Yeah, I think um, I didn't think there was a lot of good wrestling on the show, which is always makes it a little harder to <laughs> sit through a Dynamite. Uh, the opening tag match I thought was good, or it got very good in the second half. Um, kind of felt like in the first half, the crowd didn't know who to boo or cheer for 
Um, even though I would think it's safe to say the BCC guys are the heels in this program, but are kind mm. of still baby faces overall. Mm. <laughs> um, they did. Moxley did like choke Dax for like three minutes after the match was over last week. So, um, so I would, but uh, eventually it got good. They did another draw. That's the, the second draw in like three weeks they've done. Um, so let's let's watch that. Let's not be. <laughs> Like it's still preferable to I don't like doing what aboutism. It's better than a DQ or a count. They also did a DQ in the Adam rated our superstar Adam Copeland, uh, despite not being in the pay-per-view, and Daniel being in the pay-per-view was not going to uh did not uh did not choose to put the uh, Daniel Garcia over. But I guess <laughs> they had to have a reason for Adam to not be on this show if in fact he's not gonna be there. So they did the injury angle with Christian uh, laying him out. But he anyway. live right down the street. Why is he not going to be there? Oh, is he is he filming another season of that Disney Plus show that's going to get canceled? I don't know. They did pick it up for season two. I don't know. Okay. Well, for me, yeah, maybe he's he's got one of his vi- many acting projects that he's uh, that he's working on uh, uh, is on there, or maybe he'll just do a run in on the show and they want to delay the. <laughs> don't they have a? They have a April. Canada show, don't they? Are they going to wait to do the the Christian Edge match there? They announced like eight dates for Canada okay. <laughs> over a course of four months. So I I don't know. <laughs> I think there's one coming up relatively soon for either March or April. So I wonder if they they already did a match to Canada on on a Dynamite though. So I don't know what what exactly that reasoning would be. But I'm happy that I'm not going to watch <laughs> Adam Copeland wrestle live. Hopefully. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, the dynamite I thought was it wasn't like a horrific show or anything, but yeah, it was just it was just kind of a bunch of a bunch of stuff happening, and uh, we just uh, the, Tony Storm and Diana Perazzo each got a very quick win. Diana Perazzo almost killed women's head coach Madison Rain, um, or or there was miscommunication. I don't want to say it was Diana's fault. I don't know that it was or wasn't, but um, regardless. Uh, it was not a strong show in the ring. Um, uh, and the h- real highlight as far as a promo goes is definitely the uh, Sting promo, which you talked about, which is, I think, if you didn't ever watch Sting in TNA, you might think Sting was a bad promo. I think that's, I think he became a pretty good promo during his TNA run. But uh, this was very different than a what I would normally consider a good Sting promo, which is usually where he's very boisterous and loud and yelling. And this was very understated and simple. And uh, Sting's never really a guy where you feel like it's <laughs> like he's like he's being on the level with you, <laughs> in my opinion. He doesn't ooze sincerity. Yeah, he's a, he's a bit aloof. And that's fine, you know. <laughs> this is a side hustle, anyway. He's he's got his real estate gig, but he, he has been famous and wealthy for thirty five years. Sure, yeah. So, <laughs> but I thought he he came off incredibly sincere, and and in a very understated way made made this retirement match against the Bucks feel like the biggest match in the company, and maybe one of the one of the bigger matches in the company's history. So. He did a great job, for sure. Hey, and they decided that Ric Flair is going to be a heel managing the Young Bucks. <laughs> that sounds great. That's Well, to me, it, <laughs> it works. You could do one of two things. Either he double-crosses the Bucks and saves Sting, thus they end, they end Sting's career with them as friends, or it's for old time sake he tries to turn on Sting one last time, but this time Sting finally thwarts him. And gives him the, the stinger splash because you know Flair is just itching to take bumps on this, of course, on on this show before it's all is said and done. Before he shuffles back off to WWE so Dwayne can make his movie about him. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. Uh, AEW forbidden door is going to be at uh, arthur ash stadium this year i don't know if that means grand slam or no grand slam maybe they may not try to put uh 20, people into the building for dynamite right now um but uh forbidden door 
pay per view, you could probably mm -hmm. probably uh, put uh, quite a few people in there for that. So that's an interesting idea. Uh, and uh, AEW has hired a new vice president of content development, <laughs> Jennifer Pepperman, mm -hmm. who is an uh, incredible name, by the way, who was mm -hmm. uh, an inc a um, a daytime Emmy award winning writer uh, uh, for soap operas. Mm hmm had been with WWE since 2017 as a writer and producer, and then just up and left WWE and uh, showed up in in uh, in AEW this week. And can I just preemptive strike people here? There is a narrative going around that she is going to be like Mercedes Money's personal writer or something along those lines or that she was she right that she was brought in because mercedes is coming in mm -hmm. and like mercedes uh ordered it or something i don't know it's like this woman was brought in to be the number two person in creative in the company behind tony khan she was not brought in to write promos for Mercedes. <laughs> like, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> like, right. Like, the narrative that she, like, did Mercedes go to Tony and say, hey, if you can get this person, I think that would be a great idea. Okay, maybe it planted the seed, but the idea that they're bringing in a new number two in creative just to like write promos for Mercedes is absurd. That's all I have to say about that. There wouldn't be a lot of like evidence to suggest <laughs> that Tony Khan was would has a, had ever done that for anyone, <laughs> unless you consider him hiring a steel <laughs> when when Punk came in and rehiring a steel. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, specifically with, uh, yeah, with like the creative and producer people. But as far as like correct. getting friends hired, I mean, sure, there's a there are dozens, <laughs> right? <But> you, <laughs> dozens and, of people up and down the roster that have been right. hired because they're friends, right? But to your point, she's not just like getting a generic, well, vice president of content is a pretty generic term, but not in a <laughs> true. It's not her fault. That's just how things are named now, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, her being like the number two person in creative, uh, I think she's not getting that just because she's pals with Mercedes or I guess, I guess, as has been said, she was kind of the head, the like, she handled a lot of the women's storylines on SmackDown uh, when Mercedes and Bailey were kind of the, the top characters on that show. So um. But again, it doesn't mean she she wasn't only writing promos for <laughs> for one person and she was at no point the number two there. So, yeah, the fact that she's been placed in this position is not because she is friendly and she's not just following. <laughs> she's not Ryan Gore. She's not just <laughs> following the wrestler, the superstar around wherever they go. Right. She's not waiting in the lobby. <laughs> to be called in by the superstar yeah Mercedes uh, said uh said jennifer why don't you uh why don't you go to aw she said yeah all right not a bad idea <laughs> I, I, I was gonna suggest that <laughs> exactly exactly uh hangman not injured we already talked about this in in passing uh not sure what the deal is you could just look at Hangman's schedule and say, well, you know, for a tippy top guy, he sure ain't been around a whole lot over the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if there's some, something, some health issue with a family member or something along those lines. But um, I think you, we can all draw our own conclusions. And uh, it's got to be a pretty serious deal if uh, he's not hurt and... He's been advertised as part of his pay-per-view uh, triple threat match for uh, for weeks now, and we're two weeks out from it, and he's uh, maybe not on that show. So, 
yeah, it's strange. I mean, it, it, I understand why there's confusion <laughs> to sure. an extent if you're just watching the show every week and he's been built up as part of this, you know, big time title program and him and Swerve has been one of their hottest feuds for nine months now or whatever. Um, not that long, like six months. But uh, yeah, like you said, if it's a, it's some sort of there's some reason why he's just been disappearing off and on for uh, seemingly a year now, I would think. Other than obviously there was the concussion back a while ago that put him out for a while. But yeah, he's been he's been on and off TV a lot over the last year. And whatever whatever the issue is, hopefully it's resolved. But yeah, obviously they've they've decided that it's it's touch and go enough that they needed to kind of hedge their bets and have something in case they need to uh, to write him out. Um, and uh, and Jerry Jerry Lynn was very upset that Fight Four reported that he wasn't actually hurt, which I thought was funny. And. I only bring this up because he was like, well, God forbid we, you know, we try to have a cliffhanger on our show without, uh, you know, without the dirt sheet spoiling it. He didn't, I'm putting words in his mouth, but that's, that was the implication of what he said. 100%. 100%. Conan responded with the, the 100 emotion. Conan (laughs) doesn't like when dirt sheets report things. (laughs) about you know behind the scenes issues that's not something that conan would do he's not that kind of guy (laughs) he doesn't like when people run to the dirt sheets to explain what's happening backstage unreal unreal oh sweet irony uh number one leaker of all time conan Mm -hmm. (laughs) there are (laughs) yes he's complaining about the cmll guys to anybody that will listen right now correct allegedly yeah. for yeah i don't i don't think there's anything alleged about it uh, <laughs> i think he was responsible for dave Meltzer taking like three l's last friday <laughs> Un- unreal uh unreal uh, kazuchika okada finishes up with new japan this weekend there's a friday night or a thursday night slash friday morning show uh, where he is part of a 10 man tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, that show headlined by Dolph Ziggler, by the way, versus David Finley. And uh, the co main is Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Matt Riddle. And wow. second from the top is Evil versus Shoto Umino. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And another title match on the show is El Desperado versus Show of House of Torture. Um, could be an all-time, uh, an all-timer of a show. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, so that's the uh, Friday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning show, and then they wrap up the the tour on uh, Friday night. Slash early Saturday morning with Naito versus Sonata for the world title, Yoda Suji versus Yuya Uimura in a hair versus hair match. Why? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, Okada will finish up his New Japan tenure with a 10 man tag in the se- second match on the show against uh, against United Empire. So, all right. They couldn't uh, sync it up where. They could get uh, Will and Will and Okada out on the same show, huh? Apparently not. <laughs> they did Okada's last singles match on the show where Osprey had that hour long cage Oof. match. Oof. Uh, Okada beat Tanahashi. <laughs> Okada's doing no jobs on the way out. By the <laughs> he way, is, he has decided to not put anyone over on his way out of the promotion. It's incredible. The Boy King has decided <laughs> he's winning every match on the way out, and he's doing. His farewell matches are two 10 man tags against United Empire, where like he can pin Henare or somebody on the way out, mm-hmm. or Callum Newman. <laughs> Those guys are eating pins. Uh huh. Right. Why else? <laughs> He's putting over absolutely no one. It's incredible. <laughs> like, like, even if you wanted to have his last, last matches be wins in these tags, fine. Sure. But like, he should have lost to somebody. Saber. One of the young guys that he spent the last year beating. 
shooter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously they see a lot in Suji. Like, you know, give him a big singles win. Try to jumpstart him. Uh, no. Literally anyone. Sonata, <laughs> finally. Literally anyone. Yeah, could have literally <laughs> put anybody over. Like, I understand not... Like, I understand him beating Tanahashi because, like, Tanahashi's not getting anything out of beating Okada at this point. But, yeah, he just didn't. <laughs> he had his last singles match, and uh, you put him against his old rival, the president, and uh, he just beat him again. <laughs> and now he's wrestling 10-man tags against nobody. So, fascinating. Fascinating. Like, I feel like a book could be written. <laughs> about just Okada's last year in in New Japan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is incredible. All right. Well, we have uh we've literally globe trotted here today and uh we've saved people with flat tires and uh <laughs> we've made more Jay Leno David Letterman 2009 jokes or 2010 jokes than uh even I expect it. And I expect I expect dozens every week. Yeah, we really uh we overshot our target a little bit. We <laughs> really delved in. Here's what we know about Dwayne. Uh he he likes cutting promos that go way too long on the movie television and he has an old truck he likes to take away. <laughs> old truck. Right. All right. Uh, until next time, everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Also, let us know that Cody is a family guy. <laughs> it fits. It fits so wonderfully. Uh-huh. <laughs> we also let us know that it was his idea for to change the match back to Cody. He's he's very yes. happy about how all this is going. He's laughing, in fact. Yes, he's very. He actually wants to be a heel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, this was the plan all along. Of course. <laughs> He's very what? happy about how all of this has gone. This has been a he's really happy that he joined the board two days before Vince McMahon was out <laughs> of the company for being an alleged sex monster. Uh yeah. yeah, he's happy about it. Like everything's going great. This has all been exactly how he thought his uh the first quarter of 2024 would go for him. Yeah, a hundred percent. hundred percent. I just need to filibuster for a second while I found my coffee cup. There you go. Oh, that first sip. <sighs> it always goes down smooth. As uh, as you may remember, I refer to that as the magic hour. <laughs> <laughs> the magic hour. We may we may have gone over this before, but do you know there's a Wikipedia page with all the trunks trump's nicknames for people <laughs> i think you've told me about it i don't think i've ever looked <laughs> at it before it's fun it's not as fun as it could be but it's fun <laughs> all right i had to google trump nicknames today to try to come up with nicknames for brian and dave and uh i once again was reminded of that wikipedia page list of nicknames used by donald trump and they're broken down uh sloppy Steve. Sure. Basement Biden. <laughs> Beijing Biden. <laughs> Crooked Joe Biden. Sure. Sleep Sleepy Joe. Slow Joe. <laughs> Little Michael. <laughs> for Michael Bloomberg. Oh, right, of course. Mini Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> That's better. For Jerry Brown, uh, Governor Jerry Moonbeam Brown. For George P. Bush, my Bush. <laughs> my Bush. What? 
Was that the bush that like endorsed him instead of Jeb or whatever? Correct. Uh, for Jeb, of course, low energy Jeb. <laughs> the uh, way he P- just ruined Jeb's entire <laughs> career <laughs> in such short order. <laughs> like we had just like it's hard for people to remember that far back, but in like 2014, Jeb Bush was the nominee in 2016. It had just been decided. <laughs> <laughs> and then Trump called him low energy on stage. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. He just end, he ended him. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not going to finish this list, but is maybe the worst uh, um, tragedy of our generation here uh, the fact that he denies Meatball Ron. <laughs> Yeah, like I always imagine that's like he must not feel like he came up with that one and can't con- or can't convince himself that he's the one who came up with that one. <laughs> so he has to stick to the sanctimonious. Could, have, could also have gone with Puddin' Run on that weird story where he was eating pudding with his fingers. <laughs> what a freak. <laughs> I mean that that is worse than than the Clinton story. The Clinton stories about eating, but like there were people that used to tell stories about Clinton, like shaking four million hands at an event, then getting into the back of a limo and eating an entire apple pie with his hands, <laughs> without without washing his hands. Yeah, that's that's pretty disgusting. There's the <laughs> Amy Klobuchar ate a salad with her comb. That's another what? Yeah, that's a. <laughs> That was one of the things that came out about her during her brief failed attempts to be the Democratic nominee in 2020 was that she was like terrible to her staff. And one day they they she was trying to eat lunch and they didn't have any forks in her office. So she just ate a salad with a comb out of her purse. It's, it's worse than serial killer, serial killer behavior. Yeah. No, it's it's. <laughs> It's like do that, you wash it off? Do you just do you just like does the does the hairspray give it like a ugh is like a little extra little vinaigrette on the salad? Like dandruff clumps instead of fe- <laughs> feta cheese or something. God. You you know Amy Klobuchar has dandruff. One hundred percent, and it's fine. I've I've struggled it's... with dandruff at times. We all, many do, but she definitely does. It's a, it's a known fact. Yes. <laughs> All right, I have no idea what we're doing here. <laughs> Absolutely no clue what we're doing. I try to keep on keeping on.